So, if your book is starting to die down, the sales aren't as good. Do you A, make your art better, improve upon your story writing, and come up with newer fantastic concepts that entice more people into your book? Or do you B, virtue signal with the subtlety of an Abrams crashing through your front living room? If you're going to be B, then you're probably like Eric Larson here, who goes out and virtue signals his politics all the damn time. Uh, you can usually find Eric on Twitter if he hasn't blocked you. I believe I am blocked from him because we kind of got into it a little bit. <laughs> we kind of got into it a bit. Um, this is a guy who has tried everything to make his books better. He has even started putting sloppy sex into his books. I'm, I'm not joking. This went from a decent action oriented book back in the nineties with really good nineties art. And you can see right here, this is uh, at the end of the millennium, really decent artwork to an extent. I mean, still heroic looking character looking good. Now we, we go to this currently. It, it's, it's almost like Savage Dragon's getting younger for some reason. And he keeps drawing his characters younger and younger and younger. Uh, but at the same time, he is coming out and he is still putting his politics front and center. Look, it doesn't matter how you feel about your politics. Okay, I don't care who you vote for. What I care about is if I'm entertained. I'm not coming to your book to be preached at. If I want to be preached at, I'll go to church. If I want to learn about how not to be a racist, I'll go buy Martin Luther King's literature. I don't need you to tell me how to do it. The purpose of a comic book creator okay, and I want people to understand this, is to be a dancing monkey, okay? You get out there, you entertain people, shekels come your direction. The, the shekels will come if you send it your direction. Now, you're sitting here probably wondering, how do you know these? this is one-sided politics, okay? Because when you have propaganda, propaganda is almost always one-sided, all right? Let me explain that right now, because I kind of jumped the gun there. Politics, when you have someone putting just straight politics in, usually metaphorically, sometimes you can do it properly by showing both sides of the argument. When it becomes propaganda is when you herotize one group, but then demonize the other one. So Eric Larson apparently likes Democratic presidential candidates. How does he feel about a Republican candidate? Because if you see him talk about a Republican candidate, you know that what this is... This is all just straight up propaganda, okay? It's just straight up propaganda. Well, this is how he views Donald Trump. As some kind of monster. Demonized entirely. No, this is mostly white America in this. And as I said, this is when you know also, this is one other thing. This is the thing that Eric Larson has been doing recently, where he has been taking the girlfriend of Savage Dragon or his wife or whatever and just getting her, drawing her in younger and younger and younger and younger and younger. Also, he puts her in explicit sex scenes in the uh, the book. It's, I'm going to say this, it's borderline CP to a point. Because even in, even in Japan, if you know anything, there's two types of, je there's two types of, an there's two types of um, anime and manga. There's regular anime and manga, which goes out, and then there is hentai. And I believe even in hentai, you're not allowed to have CP. It's illegal even in Japan. Uh, Eric Larson is basically pulls this off multiple times. I mean, she has braces and everything else. It's it's just it's one of those things that you look at and you're like, okay, that she looks kind of young to be his wife. And then there's a shower sex scene, and you're like, wait, what? And the only reason I know about this crap is because other people have been. Uh, Talking about it, I don't buy Savage Dragon. I don't buy regular comics today. Last comic book that I bought, I bought a couple, Conan and Danger Girl. That was about it. But you see, this is how... There's a drastic difference. There's a propaganda. See, donkeys are good, elephants bad. Uh, creepy Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are actually upstanding, smug, uh, interesting people. Uh, Donald Trump will try to, will run you out of town. I mean, it's, 
And also another thing I think is probably wondering is, uh, you know, Eric Larson's character is a cop, <laughs> or at least started as a cop. He's like a super powered alien, I think, from another planet, and had uh, and became a police officer. And just, I think he's trying to prevent people from seeing that. He may have uh, had his character quit the police force. I'm not sure. But this is when Comics Gate comes out and says, you know, we, we don't want politics in our comics. This is what we're talking about here. Okay, if you're going to show this side as being good, then you have to show some good things of this side. And this is just screaming Orange Man bad. And, and insert your MPC script going forward. It's not something that people want to look at. This is not entertainment. It is pure propaganda pushing Eric's politics onto people who may not have Eric's politics. But he wants to push them on you anyway. How do you avoid this? One, if you're going to do politics in a comic book, you need to do them primarily metaphorically. Okay? Don't use real world people, is what I would say. Unless you're doing a book about someone who does something really good, such as, you know, like Mr. T. And if you're going to do something with someone real world, it would be a good idea to pick somebody who is somewhat politically neutral. I know that's hard to think about. But I mean, if you're going to do a book with a character in it or a likeness of a character, that person or, or, or an actual person, it should be something like Keanu Reeves' Berserker or Sylvester Stallone's Expendables comic, Expendables Go to Hell. You don't need to insert real people from the real world into a fantasy realm. You can use their likeness, but don't insert real world people into those, in those fantasy realms. Because what happens is you have two options. You are either going to demonize the hell out of them or herotize them to a point where... the And you, and you have to remember, humanity is flawed when you take real people. Heroes can be near-perfect... They can make mistakes and still get past them. But real people are flawed. To a point where people, where you can polarize a person if you're not careful. Um, like I said, you'll either heroize these people really good or you'll demonize the other side. And when you do metaphorically, metaphorically deals with the issue. This is why I'm also against using, you know, BLM. You could have a group that goes in, uh, if, take Marvel for instance, have a group of protesters protest the use of the HEROES Act, I believe it's the Superhuman Registration Act, and have them protest against it because it is, you know, they're technically they are human beings regardless, uh, unless you have a few of them that are like demons or monsters or something else. But mostly, especially when you have mutants, you have people who are just another form of human evolution is what the mutants are. And so you could pro what you can do is you can have people protest against it and say, look, this is a group of people. And that would be sort of mirroring, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, that would mirror over to the BLM message if you were going to push that. I don't support BLM because they want to be violent all the time. But you could have a moment where a hero explains this to people. Look, you can't be violent and push this because eventually you're going to piss off these people over here. You're not attacking cops. You're attacking the average citizen. These people are immigrants. And get them to stop and think for a moment. Get them to stop and realize, hey, um, you guys are causing this problem over here. These people won't support you if you don't win their hearts and minds. You can have Captain America say this because, you know, he is a soldier and whatnot. And Captain America, in my opinion, would be the perfect character to push this out on because, you know, he is a... Captain America is not a representation of what America is. And this is something that Marvel has difficulty with right now. They want Captain America to be either the America they want or to be an America... Or they want him to be a representation of what they think America is. Both renditions are wrong. Captain America is a rendition of what America can be. An actual country that looks at the character of an individual not basing that person on what group they're affiliated with, whether that be racial or political. So you can have a book where a group of BLM-like people get an education from Captain America without him beating the crap out of him, where he just says, look, uh, they're like, well, you know, we don't like what the government's doing. Some of us have mutant friends. And he says, that's true. But look at this man over here that you're attacking. You just destroyed a mutant's hot dog vending. How can you say you're for mutants not being being treated equally 
when you're over here destroying that mutant's one chance to make a living in this country. And that would be that one good strong moment. And Captain America sits back and says, you are correct in that everyone should be treated equally. But the method that you're using to get there is not going to create the movement that you want to make. If you want to be change, be the example of that change. Don't go over there and force and try to force your ideology on people because look what you're doing. You're actually hurting the very people that you claim to be protecting, that you claim to be fighting for. They're being caught in the crossfire of this violence that you're putting up. And have Captain America explain this. Mind you, Captain America does not say both sides are wrong. He just simply states the actions taken by one side to push their good idea is wrong. There's a, a quote from Rick Amaru, I believe in Tenchu 2 Stealth Assassins, where he kills the final boss, and she says, you have killed my dream. And Rick Amaru responds with, I did not kill your dream. You killed your dream with the ugliness of your ways. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I am The Last Raider. Thank you for listening to the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Also, tell me what you think down in the comments. How do you think uh, politics should be handled if you, ha if you decide to put them in a comic book? Do you agree with how I say with mostly metaphorically and uh, you know, using real-world examples very sparingly and only in a metaphorical stance? Or do you have another method? Go on and put it down here in the comments. Where I've got other people in here I know that are aspiring to be comic writers and comic artists and stuff and get on here for the comic videos that I talk about. Man, I said comic a lot in there. That should have been a drinking game. <laughs> anyway. Okay, anyway. Stay safe. Stay frosty, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.